Hey wood finishers, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, a finishing effect for creating uh, some shading around this panel. Uh, also referred to as a sunburst, I know a lot of my Lutheran brothers and sisters, they would do this for a guitar body. So where this would shape there, they would create an outside area that's a little perimeter that's a little bit darker and lighter as it goes towards the center. In essence, we're going to do the same effect with this. Um, the shape really doesn't matter. We could make a darker area across this, and then where we have the wider uh, grain, we can go lighter and then darker again and do pore filling and color those. I mean, there's, there's really no limit to this, but being able to control where we apply this colorant is, is the important piece. Uh, all right, so for this, I'm going to be using uh, non-grain raising dye. So I've got a bunch of samples here of dyes that I've used over the years and I just thought this would be a good example of, of how to get into it. So for this example I'm going to be mixing a little bit of red, probably a little bit of blue. I have um, yellow as well which I could use but I think two colors is probably all I need. It's, it's really easy to overdo this. Uh, okay so there's that. Denature alcohol is going to be my solvent here for basically cleaning the gun between coats. Uh, and then the, that brings us to the gun. So I have my standard gun that I use, and I've talked about this in previous videos. This one I think is really good for laying down a heavier coat of clear finish. I don't love this gun for this application only because it's going to broadcast a really wide fan and I don't really want that much volume of material on this. I, I could do it in a pinch, but what I prefer is a little decal gun like this one. And so this will allow me to come in and, um, and have a smaller stream and I could pinpoint how much uh, distribution of the fan and how much material is going to be presented here. And so for all these reasons, this is this is my right, uh, the best choice for me. Uh, okay, the last thing to discuss for this is um, the suspension of this die. We could do it a couple different ways. Uh, this die, as you know, could be mixed with some type of a, a finish solution. So it could be shellac, it could be lacquer. For purposes of this, just to lay down the color, I think. Uh, just a solution of denatured alcohol with no binder in it is probably the best bet because I can come back in and I could take a clear rag with just some of the solvent. I can kind of um, uh, blend or fade some of these if I need to. Uh, getting a brush in there I think would be a good option. But anyway, this is what I want to do. Um, just go with denatured alcohol and then the, the colorant. The other thing when I'm doing this in order to create this sunburst pattern uh, that's going to be concentric is I want to have the ability to rotate this and this lazy Susan I built gosh a million years ago uh, and it's probably something that I would recommend everybody do or, or have available uh, just because of finishing and being able to get in around areas uh, just it's it's worth its weight in gold as they say okay so I'm already poured a little bit of red into um, into this detail gun. I would recommend, regardless of the two colors you choose, I would recommend starting with the lighter of the two colors first. With that, you could always uh, go back and forth a little bit, so the lighter color, darker color, and create more of a uh, more of a, a painting technique of a glazing effect, where those two coats, or, or five coats or 12 coats or whatever, those start to blend uh, in the eye opposed to having those two colors mixed uh, intentionally um, in, on the surface. So anyway, I like starting lighter, I can always make it darker. All right. So with this, you'll probably notice as I start to apply this that there's almost nothing coming out here, which is kind of the point. Can see that there's very little material coming out here and I could start to tweak and modify this and I can 
continue to do so until I start to get this where I want it. starting to take shape. So the thing that I'm trying to do is I want to leave the center as close to the natural wood tone as possible and then uh, as far out as I possibly can with these corners these are going to be the darkest areas. So to envision darker and darker and then kind of fading between these this is where the lazy susan really starts to come into effect for, for benefits. Um, what I'm trying to avoid now, once I have some color on it, is a lot of movement with where the gun is, is pointing. I typically want to leave this stationary and then move the lazy Susan around to really start to adjust this. So let me try one more round. <laughs> circle and I actually think that's better. I think the um, the more perfect this looks it's going to feel somewhat static so I want to make this as freeform as possible and this little corner right there I want to touch up just a bit otherwise I think I'm pretty happy with this. Yeah I like that better. Okay cool. All right, so that is that. Always a good idea to disconnect the pressure. Releasing the pressure on this trigger will allow me to clear out most of the material. Just solvent through this gun. That's not good at all. It doesn't take much. weren't blending these then I would probably be a bit more cautious about contaminating one color to the next but I'm going to throw in blue. Careful not to drag it over the surface. And this is one of the bigger benefits of being able to um, use just the die without a binder is I can come back in right away so this is not totally dry but it is dry enough for us to reapply if this had a binder if I were using shellac or lacquer um, you know those are probably the two that I would probably use uh, then I have to wait for those to fully cure and then I can scuff them up and then reapply it but with this I don't have to sand I can just jump right back into it speaking of sanding for this particular application, because there's no um, there's no film or thickness on top of the wood grain, um, but the wood is going to show through. So I've already done my, my all of my sanding up to 220, and um, I won't have the opportunity if I didn't sand to 220 after all this color is on to go back in and sand this off before I apply my top coat. So 220 is probably 
a good place, um, depending on where this is going to be and how high of a sheen you want the finish to look. Uh, maybe 400 or higher would be a better solution. All right. All right, that's coming out pretty hot. That's too much. All right, great. All right, here we go. So again, I want to keep my gun pretty stationary. I'll move it in from the outside corner towards the center, but I do want a little bit of this red to shine through. So I'll be mostly sticking to the outside perimeter. said that I'm not going to move my hands around much. I'm instantly lying and doing it like crazy. All right, so I don't know if I hate this, but I think that I could use a little bit more color somewhere, probably in this red tone. I'm bringing this in a little bit more. That will allow me to bring the blue a little bit more present. Um, the things that I was looking for is I wanted to make sure, the corners obviously, but I wanted to make sure that every one of these edges had just a little hint of blue all the way around. Um, but I think there's a good enough balance of the two tones that I'm working with. After I've done this and I'm happy with it, um, I'm, it's easy enough to start applying uh, a colored grain filler or pore filler um, or not, and then, um, and then going with my top coat on top of this. Uh, last word of advice with this, because I'm using denatured alcohol as the vehicle to liquefy all this stuff, I want to be really careful about not spraying shellac on top of this. If I were to use shellac with denatured alcohol as the solvent, it's going to start to get into where this dye is, and it's going to start to show off these little tiny um, little dots, basically, where the solvent has etched its way through just a little bit, to be just enough to be annoying. So I would go with uh, lacquer or polyurethane or water base or whatever on top of this, and... Um, and then that way, there's no chemical issues of reactivity here. Okay, cool. Well, hopefully that was helpful. And uh, now you have another tool in your arsenal of finishing options. Thank you very much for watching.